A warning. This podcast contains adult language, accounts of sexual abuse, suicidal thoughts, and other deeply sensitive material. Please use discretion. Previously on Terminal, The Dying Church Planter. The pastor with cancer is carrying a cross 100 miles. If every good story needs a good headline, Richard Pope gave news outlets in Salisbury the best headline they'd had in years. We had such a huge influx of, att- of visitors during, like after that season, and our community loved it, man. Skeptics came to Canvas Church to see the dying church planter. I was like, okay, well, I don't really believe in this whole God stuff, but Richard has cancer and he's still doing all this. Like, I wanted to see how it was going to work out. And when everybody saw just how well this thing called a church plant was working out, they bought in. Yeah, that's where I kind of like had this interest that then turned into like a calling and a passion. um, And it just kind of snowballed from there. Everybody I interviewed said, come just once, and you'll see something you've never seen before. Yeah, I tell people, look, just dip your toe and just come in and check it out one Sunday, and you'll say, you know what? It's just totally, totally different. And so now, it's time to see what all the fuss is about. I'm Tony Hudson, and this is Terminal, The Dying Church Planter. Episode 7, Sunday Best. I am a runner. I started 20-something years ago, not too long after my last round of chemo had finally worked its nauseatingly slow and tortuous way out of my system. And yes, I know it's been six episodes since I mentioned I once had cancer. So if you forgot, I understand. But back to running. I suppose it'd be natural for people to assume I started exercising out of a concern for my physical well-being, but I didn't. I started running because I found out that when I run, I pray. That's how I ended up here, seeing the sunrise on a Sunday in Salisbury. I've learned after 20 years of early morning running that a perfectly clear sky does not make for an Instagram-worthy sunrise. There needs to be at least one good cloud. You can't really see how spectacular the sun's light can be until there's an imperfection for that light to reflect off of. On this Sunday at sunrise in Salisbury, there were clouds in the sky and colors all around. And it was perfect. Because this would be a day full of imperfections off of which light would reflect in astoundingly beautiful ways. Richard said, if you want to see something crazy, come early. Hey guys, good thing you came early because it's packing out already. So I came early and I saw something crazy. Hey, make sure we put a giving envelope everywhere. We can't forget that. (laughs) Most important thing in church is a giving envelope. For sure. Baby, do you have enough Peyton, do you have enough microphones up there? I saw a church planter and an envelope distribution director and a sound setter upper. And there was pandemonium and there was panic and there was Richard Pope's very own unique brand of conversational whiplash. All right. When you guys get a chance, if I could just get the three instrumentalists to play any of the songs together, if I can get you guys mixed, and then I'll do the voices. Can we dread my hair, Peyton? I'll... <laughs> I think Tony should dread his hair. <sighs> We're going to have 120 people here today. Ish. So do we pull up chairs and do standing room? Welcome to Sunday morning at Canvas Church. Zena, 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 Zena. She's getting baptized today, so I'm just going to chant like that all day. Today, there is a baby dedication, four baptisms, 
no signal going to the video monitor in the overflow room, and the live stream isn't working. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Sorry guys, it's crazy, crazy. Rob, go to Ryan, Ryan needs your help, we can't get that in the lobby still. Do you, hey, do you have an adapter for an HDMI? And for better and for worse, there are people. Everywhere, there are people. Have you ever seen the gag at the circus where dozens of clowns all pile out of one tiny Volkswagen? Watching people come in the front door of Canvas Church on a Sunday morning is kind of like that, only in reverse. Okay, we did not think there'd be this many people here. Holy crap, Tony. And that is why on this Sunday, with 20 minutes still left to go before worship and the room already filled beyond capacity, Richard did the only thing he could do. Hey guys. Uh, do me a favor. If there's an open seat near you and you can squish down a little bit, do me that favor real quick. And if you're a regular at Canvas, and I mean like you're here all the time and you don't mind, like you don't mind, don't leave, but you wouldn't mind. Could you stand outside and watch through the windows? No, no kidding. Like if you don't mind, you're here all the time. We're literally, hey, yeah, let's make some room. Hey, let's give a round of applause to those guys for making some room. Yeah! Sacrifice for the gospel. Hey, if anyone else doesn't mind watching outside, don't feel like you have to. If you're new here, come and enjoy. But if you do mind, yeah, go outside. Whew. Worshiping through a window sounded like a pretty unique experience to me. So I joined a group of 20 or so people who volunteered to go and sit outside. Canvas Church meets in a storefront. There's a barber shop on the left, an empty lot on the right, and a parking lot out front. And on this particular Sunday morning, there was a man outside, quickly and calmly squeezing himself between parked cars, directing traffic, opening windows, and setting up chairs. I'm Pastor Stephen Dubbs. I'm the care pastor at Canvas Church. It was not that long ago that Stephen had no clue what a church plant even was. But now, putting out fires at Canvas is part of his Sunday morning routine. I honestly never thought about, hey, churches have always just kind of been here, I suppose, but it, it wasn't particularly on my radar until Richard, you know, said, hey, we're gonna plant a church. And I think even then, I wasn't sure how big it was going to get and just how quickly we've grown in the span of a year. It's, uh, it's incredible. And a little terrifying at the same time. Five minutes before the worship service is supposed to start, the crowd in the parking lot has grown. To my right, there's a college kid smoking a joint. To my left, James Schultz is sharing the gospel with a curious old man who'd wandered over from the barber shop. Richard comes out, looks at the sky, and mutters something about rain. I open my weather app and show him what it says. 62 degrees, 0% chance of rain. He whispers, thank you, Jesus. Then he turns around, goes back inside, and readies himself to do that thing he was created to do. I preach on Sunday, and I have bad days most of the time for me. But I just deal with it. And the church, he answered me, I just conquer by the strength of the Lord. No, I grovel. <laughs> I trust that the strength of the Lord is there, right? And I always just said it, and now I really believe it. I'm like, Lord, work through this broken body. Because I think the most important time of the week in ministry is Sunday morning. Like, we're, we need to be, like, yeah, it's not, like, like, Christians need to be Christians throughout the week. But from my perspective as a pastor, there's something special, and I'd even say holy and different about God's people gathering on Sunday. So, like, for me, I'm like, Lord, may I preach your word? That's the prayer. Lord, if you want me to preach the word to your people today, you have to make it possible. And if you make it possible, I'll do it. And if you don't, I don't know what's going to happen. And he's always been faithful. I'm going to pray. Let's get in a posture of prayer. Father, we just thank you that we could gather here today, God. Lord, we thank you for the gospel. We thank you for the good news. We thank you for overflowing sanctuaries, God. Lord, we thank you that this space is too small for us. May our posture as a church not be celebration over man's ability, but instead a declaration of God's ability. 
that this church that was underfunded, that launched in COVID in a small crappy building is blowing this place out, not because of good preaching or a good looking pastor or good worship or anything else, but the grace and goodness of God. We love you, Jesus. And this morning we worship you knowing you're present, you love us and you care for us. And all God's people said, amen. When a hundred people are willing to shoehorn themselves into a room designed for 30, And then when 50 more people are willing to stand in a parking lot and listen through a window, it might be worth investigating exactly what it is all these people came expecting to hear. Who here struggles with the world they see around them? They came expecting to hear the truth. I believe Jesus is willing to do good things for his people. A topic Richard has become intimately acquainted with. That might not be miraculous healing all the time. Sometimes, can I tell you something? And I get to say this so you don't get to be mad at me. I have cancer. Y'all know that, right? I think that's actually a good thing from heaven. Not cancer. Cancer's bad. Cancer's horrible. It's sin. It's death. But God's using it for good. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. That doesn't say that all things are good. But, but, but he's working it together for my good. Can I challenge you? You might not want the things you need. I'll tell you this. I became a better pastor when I was humbled by puking in between launch Sunday services. I didn't want that. But all of a sudden, I was like, man, I kind of suck as a human. I am really frail. How would you pray if you actually believed God to do, could do anything? How would you pray? Right? So I wrestle because my theology tells me that God's sovereign and whatever happens is good. But I also hate that I'm sick. And I often find myself going to one or two extremes. I either pray on like nonstop these huge, crazy prayers, right? Like I'm watching Veggie Tales to get my dose of holy. I'm kidding. Or I go to the other side. And I just, I'm like, it's okay if I die. God's sovereign. Why not both? Why can't I pray for my healing, but also pray that my heart would be okay with whatever God gives me? Church, that's my challenge for you. God, if you fix it, amen. And if you don't, amen, you're still worthy. You are who you are. You are Jehovah Jireh. You're a provider, but you're also holy. And what you give me is good. God will provide everything you need, but it might not be what you want. And church, that's what I want to wage war with today, is that we often have turned God into a genie. God, give me what I want without any worship or devotion to God. I want to challenge you with something. God is not your genie. God is your friend and he loves you and he can be your savior if he's not. But if you've lowered God to some cheap merchandise at Walmart, that's a really crappy view of God. Here's what God actually wants from you. Your obedience, your worship, and your prayer. Today, Richard preached his entire sermon without throwing up. It was a rare and welcome blessing for a congregation that sets the bar for success at an entirely different level. Life is hard. And you know what's weird is I think that that's true at every church. I don't think that's more true because their pastor has cancer. But I've never had to dance around. And I'm not afraid to say hard things. Why? Because every week, their pastor has cancer. And this is, I think our church is cool. Everybody probably thinks our church is cool, but there's like this really rare, I would say, rawness and transparency here. And I want to say it's top down, right? Because I want to say that I started it. But it's really bottom up because when I was broken in front of them, they just loved me and they they shepherded me. You're Zena. All right, you got in there? Now, I'm going to probably have you come this way just a little bit. You're going to be fine. It's just water. Oh, yes. I can swim. Uh, you can swim. <laughs> After the sermon, people in the parking lot crowded around the windows to watch what came next. Oh, Customers from the barbershop even walked outside mid-haircut to see what all the excitement was about. All right, Ms. Zena, it's my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. From death to life. Amen. 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 I stood at the window next to Brennan Shirey and watched as more people inside lined up to get baptized. Alex, it's our honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. From death to life. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. Big old soaking up hug. This is what Brennan and all these other people really came to see. Something bigger and better than just a dying church planter. 
Is there any good that can come out of this? He loves water, right? Do you see this church? All right, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit from death to life. Amen. And it wasn't so bad. For my English class, I wrote a profile about Richard. Um, one of my points was that obviously nobody's super joyful about dying, but then when you see the insane amount of growth, it's like God's not even waiting to make good come out of this. Alex, it's my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. From death to life. Yeah. Amen. 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 High five. It's been a really cool thing to watch. It makes me feel a little bit better um, about things that I struggle with, because I see the kind of things that's happening in the church. We celebrated four baptisms. That's so crazy. Like in one Sunday, the the church was packed wall to wall. People had to stand outside. Like that's good. That to me, that's God working in brokenness already. When church was over, it wasn't over there was still one very important item on the order of worship. An address flashed on the screen, and then all who could got in their cars and drove as quickly as they could to 325 Broad Street. When they arrived, Richard and a team of helpers were already there. Ah, uh, they're rolling in. Canvas is rolling. Steve and Jen, your guys' job is to guide them to the stairs. Dave, guide them to the door. Desi's guiding them to the chairs and break. This is the Chipman Cultural Center, and in two weeks, Canvas Church will move here. Definitely bigger than where we are now, isn't it? The building was originally a church. It was built in 1837 by freed slaves. You like the acoustics in here? Yeah! Me too. We're going to get noise violations. <laughs> Richard and his congregation came here today to preach a little, sing a little, and generally kick the tires on their new worship space. Hey, does this feel like home? Yes! Does it sound like home? Yes! And that was a perfect ending to a day filled with imperfections against which light could shine. I worry about Richard's overall health deteriorating. This is Peyton. I worry about the church plant and what it's going to be like after he's gone. But uh, I am really excited for the memories that we're going to make until he passes. I'm really excited for the how the church is going to grow. I'm really excited for the baptisms. I'm just really excited for how God is moving in Salisbury uh, because I've seen people just make decisions to follow Jesus who really, really struggled with their faith. Uh, I've seen people get baptized and just really find rejuvenation and hope through their faith in a way that they had really struggled with just hopelessness and wondering what life's all about. So it was just this crazy team of people doing this crazy thing. And I'm just so glad that I'm not God because God knows way more than me. It doesn't matter how crippled or jangled up my body is. It doesn't matter if I'm bald. It doesn't matter if my eyebrows fall off again. I mean, I'm not on treatment anymore, so they might stay for a while. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how much pain I'm in. It doesn't matter what. Nothing on heaven or earth shall separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not even cancer. Not even my doubts or my fear. And still God's church is growing. I don't know. Amen. 
on the next episode of Terminal, The Dying Church Planter. At the end of every good story, every good storyteller will ask this one question. So what? Yeah, I have been through a lot. So what would I say? What have I learned? Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Richie. He met monsters. Then he met Jesus. Then he got cancer. And then he started a church. So what? Where is God? Where is God when we suffer? And um, what did he save me for? Like Those are questions I have. We'll try and answer the hardest and the most important questions of all on the next episode of Terminal, The Dying Church Planter. You can find photos, videos, and other bonus material. And you can learn more about church planting with SEND Network at TerminalChurchPlanter.com.